This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by ExpressVPN. So aside from the people actually suffering and dying from COVID-19, this pandemic's biggest victims have been people whose jobs entail dealing with anti-mask lunatics who treat having to wear a mask or just any piece of cloth over their little mouths and noses like the worst injustice a person could ever possibly face. And actually, I mean, you could argue that since so many of the people suffering and dying from COVID these days are also the people who've spent this entire pandemic throwing tantrums about masks, the people who've had to put up with this abuse for nearly two years are in fact the pandemic's biggest victims. You could make that argument. (laughs) In any case, while the recipients of anti-mask abuse have mainly been frontline workers for most of the pandemic, recently, It's been the education sector that has had to just sit there and get yelled at by the dumbest motherfuckers in this country. In case you haven't checked recently, COVID case numbers right now are four times what they were this time last year, and hospitalizations are two and a half times this time last year. And that's just the national average. Shit is even worse at the state and local level in a lot of parts of the country. Nevertheless, a lot of very loud parents Uh, Or people who are very clearly aged out of having children that go to these schools. People with nothing better to do. Very suspiciously old people going to elementary school and uh, middle school uh, meetings. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, you... We start, you go to one of karaoke uh, bars and you start to see a lot of the same people and you're like, oh, that's their thing. They just go anywhere there's a, there's a microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, some people go to karaoke, some people go to school board meetings. Yeah, there's, there's people in their 70s going to these school board meetings and it's like, Mm, are you sure that you have kids in this school district mm-hmm. or do you just have a lot of time on your hands? Yeah. Um, yeah. So a, a lot of very loud parents or not in this country are, they're not about to have another entire school year with their kids at home doing remote learning, learning COVID be damned. Uh-uh. Uh, the kids, they're going back to school and any attempt by schools to impose the most basic preventative measure, masks, is just straight up tyranny to these people. And never mind the fact that just like last year, going back to normal is going pretty horribly. Uh, In just one school district in Florida, 15 teachers and staffers have died from COVID already just 10 days into the school year. It's not great. No. But none of that matters to these people. And for the last month or so at school board meetings, uh, they've been... The people running the school boards, they've been trying to figure out and uh, putting a good faith effort into uh, figuring out the impossible task of getting all the kids back in the classroom, but also not creating daily super spreader events. Not possible, but they're giving it a shot and they've held school board meetings for this and shit has just gone completely off the rails. Just go on YouTube or Twitter or TikTok and just type in school board masks. and You'll be treated to hundreds of hours of absolute madness. But you don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Here's just a few examples, though, for you uh, that I found around the internet. And again, this is all just from the past month. These are our kids, not yours! We are yours! Actions have consequences. If you vote for this, we will come for you in a non-violent way. I'm going to tell you that your time is up. The people of the state and this district are rising up, and you have awakened a sleeping beast. We know who you are. 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 These are demonic entities, and we need to stick together. Remember, we have authority in Christ Jesus. These are demonic entities in all the school boards of all the United States of America, and all of us Christians will be sticking together to take them all out. The deep state medical establishment wants all of us to be depopulated. I know you guys think that's a conspiracy theory, but it's not. It's a conspiracy fact. They're all in cahoots with each other to depopulate us. This is a hoax, okay? We're sick of it, we're sick of it, we're sick of it. People that are fearful and worried and concerned, they should stay home and stay safe. Maybe the reason why we have people in the hospital is all this mask wearing. Did we ever think of that? Did we ever think of that? There are these books that I have, and I have them as a gift for you. The Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Federalist Papers, and also the Bible. And these guarantee my freedom and yours and our children's to breathe Um, oxygen. Masks don't work. 
these doctors that sit up here that were sneering at us and looking at us like we're scumbags, they need to go back to fucking medical school. And this is manufactured because we are going down the Marxist agenda here. You've, I'm 70 years old. I used to see pictures of communist Chinese children all in mass, all stepping to the drummer. That's what this is all about, Marxism. I want to talk about the real pandemic, child sex trafficking. By putting masks on these kids' face, you can't identify any of them. I'm asking you to implement a temporary mask mandate at least until every student has had the opportunity to be vaccinated against COVID-19. They don't care about your children. As a matter of fact, they hate them. They hate your kids. They hate my kids. They hate your kids. They hate my kids. Get it? But we've had to pay them for this last year to stay home with all of their benefits, okay? Because they're fearful that they might get a germ from a child. And when my child is told that they have to put something on their face, or get a vaccine when they don't want to or something in their body that they don't feel comfortable with, to me, that's being raped. And that's how I feel. And you should not be raping our children with masks or vaccines. And everybody's taking notes, buddy. Natural immunity is best. You are all demonic entities. Me, you are going you, to be you, taken down. Me, the You've Lord already had your 99.9 live through this flu, especially the kids. And the data proves that too. Science and laws shouldn't be changing so fast. Has Nuremberg taught us nothing of medical tyranny in the past? And because we're headed towards a world war, war, a world war. Afghanistan has fallen, Kabul, the Iranians, the Chinese, the Russians. How are we going to prepare the young people to go to war and defend the country if they're worried about this? Ooh. How are they going to fight? Yeah, so, you know, back when Parks and Rec was on TV, the scenes were deranged Pawnee residents who showed up to town hall meetings to yell the dumbest shit possible. It all seemed... Uh, over the top, you know, yeah. for comedy's sake. All right, nice joke. Yeah, but in hindsight, they didn't go far enough. No. They had no idea what the future uh, held. I was just thinking about it today because we talked about Arrested Development yesterday, how um, if the joke of the banana costing $10 is becoming very realistic. The joke doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Soon enough, that banana is going to cost $10. It probably should. Um, this country is actually full of psychos, even more than we thought previously. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that they all have kids that they're raising, which is, that's just great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it really shouldn't uh, come as any surprise that a lot of school board members are deciding that they don't need this bullshit anymore. <laughs> This is, most, for the most part, volunteer gigs. Yes. Uh, They're why? doing this out of the kindness of their heart. Be yeah, like, my kids go to the school, I'm here volunteering, why am I getting yelled at? Uh, so yeah, they're stepping down, and uh, I agree with them. Yeah, I probably would too. Yeah, I would never put myself in that position to begin with, because I, I know humanity, and I know not to trust it, but yeah, these people, they're learning a lesson recently. Uh, yeah, uh, the Associated Press published an article recently about all of this. Let's just read some paragraphs from it. A Nevada school board member said he had thoughts of suicide before stepping down amid threats and harassment. In Virginia, a board member resigned over what she saw as politics driving decisions on masks. The vitriol at board meetings in Wisconsin had one member fearing he would find his tires slashed. School board members are largely unpaid volunteers, traditionally former educators and parents who step forward to shape school policy, choose a superintendent, and review the budget. But a growing number are resigning or questioning their willingness to serve as meetings have devolved into shouting contests between deeply political constituencies over how racial issues are taught, masks in schools, and COVID-19 vaccines and testing requirements. Here's more. Uh, in Vail, Arizona, speakers at a recent meeting took turns blasting school board members over masks, vaccines, and discussions of race in schools. Even though the board had no plans to act on or even discuss any of those topics. <laughs> Quote, it's my constitutional right to be as mean as I want to you guys, one woman said. The board moved on after more than an hour, only to be interrupted by more shouting. Board member Allison Pratt recalled thinking that if she weren't already on the board, she wouldn't aspire to be. 
Police have been called to intervene in places including Vail, where parents protesting a mask mandate pushed their way into a boardroom in April, and in Mesa County, Colorado, where Doug Levinson was among school board members escorted to their cars by officers who had been unable to de-escalate a raucous August 17th meeting. Quote, why am I doing this? Levinson asked himself. Kurt Thigpen wrote in uh, leaving the Washoe County, Nevada school board that he considered suicide among relentless bullying and threats led by people who didn't live in the county, let alone have children in the schools. I was constantly looking over my shoulder, he wrote in July. So, yeah, pretty understandable. These people are just doing a a countrywide tour. Yeah. Yeah. The the worst people in this country have uh, realized that they have a voice and it's... It fucking sucks. Yeah. And but especially uh, for the people who actually have to be there. I just have to watch videos of it on Twitter every once in a while. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, it sucks. It, if you see a, an Econo line van rolling down the highway with a bunch of flags hanging off of it and bumper stickers covering all the windows, just turn around. Yeah. yeah. So you get why a lot of these school board members are just saying, fuck this, and stepping down from their thankless unpaid positions for the sake of their own safety and mental health. Uh, But this same feeling is also spreading to teachers and school administrators who are also feeling the wrath of their dumbest parents. And uh, this past week, a group of three men, only one of whom was an actual parent of a student, showed up at an elementary school with zip tie handcuffs to try and make a citizen's arrest of the school's principal. Here's the Daily Beast. Police arrested a 40-year-old Arizona dad after he stormed into an elementary school principal's office with a friend wielding plastic handcuffs, insisting the administration broke the law by asking his child and six others to wear a mask and quarantine after being in close contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. Quote, I can tell you the end result of that incident was we did make one arrest for trespassing, Sergeant Richard Gradillas of the Tucson, Arizona Police Department told the Daily Beast, identifying the dad as Rishi Rambaran. Uh, Two men accompanied Rambaran on Thursday as he ambushed Principal Diane Vargo while she sat with another educator at the Mesquite Elementary School in Tucson. One of the men, Kelly Walker, live-streamed the incident on Instagram, explaining that Rambaran, who was also known as Reese, had called him and asked him to be there in case he needed backup. The third man, who has not been identified, stood in the doorway of Vargo's office with a fistful of law enforcement-grade zip ties at the ready as the trio was prepared to make a citizen's arrest, Walker said. The live-streamed video has since been deleted. When this kind of coercion and bullying is perpetrated by school administrators, breaking the law, a citizen's arrest is an option worth looking into, Walker wrote on Facebook. These people are deranged. Yeah, and also they're not breaking the law. Like, you just made up the law that you like in your head. You made up an imaginary law that this school is violating, when in fact the local law is what the school is following by quarantining students Look, and making them wear masks if they've been exposed to COVID. Uh, if you're like just a normal re- person who is religious, whatever. But these religious, like this, this actually all co- comes down to religion. It does. It's the same way that people can interpret the Bible however they want. Yeah. Is the same thing they do with the Constitution. They will literally interpret that however they want to get exactly what they want and have justification for it. Yeah. It's the same fucking thing the that they've been doing with the Bible yeah. for hundreds of years. Yeah. And and much like with the Bible and religion in general, uh, you, you get a lot of conflicts from people who happen to have different interpretations. Yeah, because of, uh... <laughs> you, they, you can't argue with them because in their mind, everything is rock solid and mm-hmm. backed up by verifiable proof yeah. written in something that is infallible. They have God on their side, or I guess the founding fathers. Well, it, it, in, a, <laughs> in a lot of these people's minds, who are all, as you'll probably find out, very deeply religious, like, yeah. the Constitution might as well fucking be the Bible. Like, yeah. it might as well be the Word of God. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I didn't, I only played a few hours of it, but Bioshock 3, that's, like, pretty much, like, the premise of it is just, like, this future where, like, the founding fathers are revered as religious figures. Yeah. I think it's just, there's a term for it. It's the American civil religion. I think it's a, but it's a very interesting like sociological concept where, uh, yeah, Americans like a lot of Americans today do in their brains treat uh, the Constitution, the founding fathers like as biblical as, as biblical yeah. figures. Was yeah. it uh, the uh, the Church of Satan uh, is now fighting the abortion ban in Texas based on like if they're, they're like oh you want to go in on religion with this? Yeah. Uh, sorry to tell you, buddy, we're also a religion. I love them for that. Yeah. There are, the Church of Satan is so fucking effective 
at anything involving like uh, Religious church, church getting, and state, yeah, yeah, getting, exactly. getting a little too close because they're like, oh. Do you oh. want to see why this is stupid? Yeah, by the way, we are yeah. a religious organization devoted to the Dark Lord, Satan. So uh, we have a few thoughts to share as well. Uh, we would like our religious freedom to be uh, honored alongside yours, if that's all right with everyone. It's just so funny, too. Like, you know, you see you see an American flag, you're like, oh, pretty flag. You don't. I don't even think it's that pretty. But <laughs> the flag's fine. It's fine. But when it's, when it's a giant one that is mounted in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah. Then it's like tells you something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It makes me a little bit nervous, and that's pretty sad to say. Yeah, it does suck. Yeah, but yeah, just to reiterate, the the Kelly Walker dude, the guy that was Instagramming it, and who kind of seems to be the ringleader behind this whole bizarre incident, uh, he's also pretty active in, as you would expect, all the local anti-mask, anti-vax, stop the steal nonsense in the uh, Tucson area. That man does not have any kids at this school. I think he has kids. He homeschools them, but he has no reason, no personal connection to any of Oh, I this. bet their education is going great. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure those kids are going to turn out <sighs> perfectly normal. But uh, yeah, th- he's just a weirdo. <laughs> he owns a local patriotic, like, freedom-loving themed coffee shop. What's that fucking coffee that the the Freedom Coffee? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Black Rifle or yeah, something black. like that? Yeah, they were the, they, I think they were the first ones, but there's a whole, there's a whole subculture of uh, conservative coffee in yeah. this country, and it's very strange. Because, uh, you know, like, I mean, 20 years ago, if there was any culture associated with coffee, it was like, you know, Seattle liberals. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reading books. Well, and they're shit. trying to take it back. Yeah, they are. But it's it's just bean juice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he owns this coffee shop. Uh, it's called like Viva Coffee. And uh, they have a Facebook page that I looked at. And this page, it will give you whiplash because there will be like, there will be a post with a nice like photogenic image of a, a perfect latte with like, the foam art and stuff. And then you, you scroll a little further and the next post is about how like mask mandates or tyranny. Um, they've got a brand. So yeah, the, the coffee shop, their, their current profile picture is it's a tribute to a border patrol agent who was, I guess, close friends with Kelly Walker who died recently of COVID. Mm. Um, but that one came from the Mexicans crossing the border. Is, is, I'm, I'm sure, sure that what he, yeah, he got it. They ki- as the a border patrol worker, uh, killed my friend. All the illegals, they they went up to the Rio Grande and they all went. Yeah, <clears throat> and they blew the COVID over the border. <laughs> they killed my friend. Yeah. So anyway, last year when this coffee shop was temporarily shut down for, you guessed it, not following the health guidelines, uh, Mr. Walker, he started just straight up doxing anyone who criticized him in the comments section of like local Facebook news articles. So. That's the kind of guy we're talking about here. A real piece of shit. Uh, Anyways, here's a little more from the article. Walker said he was prepared to raise hell and insisted the school couldn't take the law into their own hands by instructing a student to quarantine. Once inside Vargo's office, the principal listened patiently as Rambaran and Walker attempted to browbeat her into reversing the quarantine order. In a sense-deleted video shot by Walker, uh, Rambaran can be seen calling the police and asking them to arrest Vargo. If Rambaran's child wasn't allowed back into the classroom immediately, the group said they were prepared to execute a citizen's arrest. Vargo, who did not respond to a request for comment, then asked the three to leave the premises. Uh, When they refused, Vargo walked out and called the police. The trio departed the scene before cops arrived. Guys, you just threatened to call the cops. What if we were the criminals? And then the principal was kind enough to go ahead and call the cops for you, and then you just leave before they even get there. What the hell? Come on. Anyways, unsurprisingly, uh, Kelly Walker's coffee shop, uh, Viva Coffee House, got review bombed once this incident started making the rounds in the local news. Uh, Here's a few of the best reviews I saw. Was having a pleasant cup of joe when out of nowhere the owner hogtied me and read me my Miranda rights. (laughs) (laughs) Came in for a coffee but then got zip tied to a chair. Zero out of ten would not recommend. The coffee tastes like horse medicine. They have the paste. They have the paste. Uh, But uh, speaking of anti-mask freakouts, it's of course not just school board members and elementary school principals dealing with this shit. Food service employees still experience anti-mask stupidity on a regular basis. And it's not just the U.S. either. Bless them. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, For example, up in Canada, a Vancouver Island Dairy Queen recently dealt with an unmasked customer who whose response to being told to wear a mask was to pull out his dick and piss on the counter like a literal baby. Uh, Please enjoy, hopefully, not everything in this clip. A man in Port Alberni has taken his frustration with BC's COVID rules to the absolute extreme, and it was caught on camera. (laughs) 
That's the sound of workers at a Dairy Queen shrieking in horror as a disgruntled customer appears to urinate on the counter. In videos posted to Facebook, the man can be heard arguing with staff, refusing to wear a mask. It's not a BC policy. BC policy says you have to observe exemptions. RCMP say this happened at a Port Alberni DQ on 3rd Avenue shortly after 9 p.m. on Saturday. Police say a man became verbally aggressive when staff asked him to put on a mask. He was asked to leave and did. And when he came back and was asked to leave again, he relieved himself at the cash register. I love, there's so many news reports about this that like, it, like it was already f funny, just the absurdity, like it sucks that this happened, but the absurdity of all this, but then hearing all of these Canadian voices describing it, and they're like going to local people like, well, so what did you think about the, the man peeing on the counter at Dairy Queen? And they're like, oh, I don't like it. People seem pretty fed up, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> it's no good. You can't just pee on the counter at the Dairy Queen. The guys pee on the counter, they're just holding the thing upside down. <laughs> hey, hey, look. Here you go, sir. Please get out. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. anyway, moving on. Having to worry about getting pissed on pretty bad. Yeah. Having to worry about some stranger throwing eggs at you is also pretty bad. And the people of Chicago have been dealing with a mystery egg thrower for the past several months, at least a year, actually. This is pretty low on the scale of things to look out for. It's it? pretty low, but on top of all this other shit that we're all dealing with, you don't want to have to deal with getting hit by an egg while you're out doing your business. Yeah. And yeah, like throwing eggs, that sounds like the work of teenagers. Ha ha ha. But someone, or maybe even multiple people, have been driving around Chicago in a white box truck, throwing eggs at random people on the sidewalk before speeding off. And this has happened dozens of times all over Chicago. Mm. Uh, here's CBS Chicago. Dozens of victims in Chicago have been left with egg on their faces, not to mention other parts of their bodies. All of them are the target of raw eggs that they say were launched out of a truck. This spring, Jennifer Lee Green of Noble Square thought the cracked eggs throughout her neighborhood were the work of a junior high joyride. At first, I thought it was just teenagers targeting stores, Green said, until it was her turn. <laughs> we crossed Ogden and suddenly there was this big splat and I felt something kind of cutting my feet a little bit and a little bit wet. Like, what is that? Neither she nor Dave Zibble uh, saw it coming. He was the target in Fulton Market a few weeks ago. We were just walking to dinner, Zibble said. A truck drove by and I didn't see anything happening. I kind of turned to talk and they hit me right in the jaw and egg. <laughs> the shock of being egged was one thing. Turning to the internet and finding they were part of what looked like a throwing spree was another. It's a pattern. And yeah, it, so this basically started with random members of just some neighborhood Facebook pages making posts being like, I just got hit with an egg. Pretty weird, huh? until the admin of a bunch of those pages realized that they had a serial egg thrower on their hands. So they created a, a dedicated Facebook page called Chicago Egg Hunters so that everyone could coordinate and share information. Uh, they were on the case. This is like when cops in multiple jurisdictions realize they've got a serial killer on their hands. They have to start sharing information, but then Diane Feinstein comes in and shuts the whole thing down. <laughs> it's true. Anyway. By the way, he was wearing this type of shoe. Oh, geez, Diane. Wait, that was uh, the Night Stalker that she did that to? Yeah, yeah, it was a very specific shoe size and brand and yeah, everything. She just She's like, shared evidence yeah. that the police were withholding. And they her. were like, great, I bet Thank he threw you. those shoes away. Fuck you fucking I, idiot. Worst person. I can't believe she's had her Leave job. Leave politics, please. She's, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Diane Feinstein's the fucking worst. Mm. But people keep voting for her. <laughs> Anyway, based on the Chicago Egg Hunters uh, crowdsourcing of information, uh, there have been at least 86 separate egg attacks in the past year or so all over Chicago. Damn. And uh, since the story made the news, there's a lot more people on that Facebook page uh, that have joined the group to share their own stories about being hit with eggs. This could be hundreds, maybe even have, thousands. They need to have the app uh, that shows the egg locations. And that way you can start doing like the yarn in the app and like see, and they did, triangulate where it's happening. They did make a map and there's pins just like all over the place. Like this, uh, this they, truck gets around. Yeah, it can't be too hard to find this truck. Well, they found it. They need to send those superheroes from Seattle over to Chicago. I know, I this know. this is like a pretty, this is the perfect crime for this them is to like, solve. This is the one you call the cops up and they're like, oh, okay, what do you want to do? Yeah, that's the thing is like the, the cops and, you know, they do have in this specific scenario better things to do, I guess. Yeah. Uh, 
maybe. Um, but uh, this is this is actually something where I could be like, yeah, you know, vigilante justice, as long as they don't kill the egg throwers, yeah. uh, could actually be useful. Just get some uh, zip tie handcuffs and go to town. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, some of the egg attack victims were quick enough to uh, get their phones out and get clear photos of the attacker's truck. And they were able to trace the license plate to a business called Value Home Furniture, which says they have fired the employee responsible. So look, there you go. Uh, but the Chicago egg hunters, they're not convinced that this is the end of the attacks. From their most recent post, in summary, these are not typical ha-ha Halloween pranksters. They're a group of adult employees committing acts of criminal battery, having already hurled hundreds of eggs, sometimes frozen or hard-boiled, at everyone from six-month-old babies to seniors, while driving in five white box trucks owned and or affiliated with U-Haul and Value Home Furniture, and being paid for their time spent committing crimes. The president of Value Home Furniture has admitted responsibility and has claimed they fired the responsible employee. Witnesses, however, have reported seeing two men in each truck, with eggs launched from both driver and passenger sides. A review of video and photographic evidence also shows that more than one box truck was involved. It's not just the one with the red graffiti. The company has admitted to having five trucks in their fleet. A squadron. A squadron. So yeah, I guess, I mean, it probably won't be long to see whether Chicago's egg terrorism problem is truly over. If this isn't just the work of one rogue they truck driver. They got that one big egg out right by the uh, the lake there. It's more no, of a, a bean. It's a bean. bean. It's a bean. Sorry. It's a bean. Yeah. The egg is in uh, London. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if if this is over, then you know there won't be any more eggs. But if if there's more than one egg man, well, you're gonna copy copycat ones too. Yeah, the eggs will continue to be pelted at innocent pedestrians. So uh, yeah, members of this Facebook group, they're also very annoyed that despite the furniture company taking responsibility for the attacks, police still don't seem to have followed up on. What is, it, it, it's a literal crime that it was is, committed. It is, it is, yeah. Um, nor has there been really any proof that the company even actually fired the person responsible, aside from a text message saying that they have. Yeah. So this may not be over yet, and uh, we will keep you up to date on any further developments to this story. Uh, Where's the census cowboy when you need him? It, it, if I were the residents that were being attacked by eggs, I would stay inside the entire week leading up to Halloween because people are going to, take advantage of this egging to really ratchet things up around that time when yeah. when when eggings typically occur anyway so yeah, yeah i'd be careful out there mm -hmm. in the windy city yeah uh in other news parents to be continue to reveal the sex of their unborn children in the most obnoxious and dangerous ways possible and while this latest gender reveal disaster didn't kill anyone or cause any wildfires it still managed to scare the shit out of a ridiculous amount of people most of them children here's a news report from nashville's kkrn Three schools in Rutherford County were on a brief lockdown Wednesday afternoon while officers investigated a nearby incident of shots being fired. The cause of the gunfire? According to Rutherford County officials, an expectant father fired a weapon during a gender reveal phone call. Murfreesboro Police tell News 2 John Pittard Elementary, Oakland Middle School, and Oakland High School were briefly on lockdown Wednesday because of the incident. According to police, the soon-to-be father was calling relatives to reveal the gender of his child. The man then stepped outside and fired celebratory rounds into the air, and the expected mother screamed out in excitement. A neighbor heard the shots and screams and called 911. This happened a few blocks from the schools. Officers have cited the father with unlawful discharging of a firearm inside the city limits. Nobody was hurt in the incident, and schools were quickly lifted from lockdown. As for the gender of the baby at the center of the whole incident, the family is having a boy. So, Who, who will grow up to one day have his own gender reveal party and do the same exact thing? I'm going to put so many schools under active shooter lockdown when, yeah. when I find out the gender of my... My baby. The, I guarantee be awesome. you these people, because it happened in like Tennessee, these people are like, I miss the way this town used to be when you could fire off a couple shots with everyone yeah. freaking out. Hoo, hoo, and they blow into a moonshine jug. Yeah. I miss the old Tennessee. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> Things just ain't the same as they used to be. These kids are bang, too bang, soft. Bang, bang, bang. These damn kids, they, every, these children, now they think whenever they hear a gunshot go off during school hours, there, there's an oh, no, active I'm shooter. Under a threat. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, going back to the school thing, uh, someone posted it was a text exchange from a teacher that was like uh oh, yeah. how's it going and it's like yeah. here's how things are going i asked if i could keep my door open to ventilate the deadly virus and they said no you have to keep it closed in case of an active shooter yeah so that's uh Ameri the american school system right now things are going great mm -hmm. everything's fine you know but hey at least we pay these educators a living wage yeah, they don't deal have to worry about bullshit. anything at uh, least they are paid handsomely yeah to deal with a job that most people would never agree to do in the first place because it fucking sucks. 
No, oh, no. what's that? No, they listen. have to buy their own supplies they, and they make uh, like fucking about... fifteen thousand dollars a year. <laughs> it's, it's like it's terrible. It's horrible. Yeah, we uh, I think we've been doing things backwards here. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, in uh, other news, we recently talked about how Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman appear to finally be in some serious trouble for their years of disinformation and defamation on behalf of the uh, Donald Trump movement. What ultimately took them down, though, wasn't all the times they made up ridiculous stories about prominent Trump opponents being like sex fiends and shit, but rather a bunch of automated phone calls that they sent out to voters before the 2020 election in which they illegally gave out disinformation about voting by mail and also made sure that everyone knew that, yes, they were the ones behind these phone calls by just loudly identifying themselves yes. as the people on the call behind the call. Much like the guy who Instagrammed himself trying to arrest the principal. Yes. It was me. I did it. Uh, they are now facing potentially years in prison and millions of dollars in fines. But uh, in the meantime, with Jacob still banned from most social media platforms, Jacob's weird dad is still out there on Twitter getting uh, owned in his son's place. Uh, recently, ESPN reporter Jeff Passan was on Twitter simply doing his job when David Wall showed up in his mentions and uh, got completely vaporized. Owned beyond recognition. Corn cobbing in a way that only his son could be proud of. He got popcorned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jeff Passan wrote, On the night New York Mets general manager Zach Scott was arrested for allegedly drunk driving, he was at the Connecticut home of team owner Steve Cohen, sources tell ESPN. A fundraiser for the team's Amazing Mets Foundation was being held at the house, and Scott and players were there. To which, okay, that's, okay, that's yeah, news. That's news. Yeah. To which David, <laughs> David Wool replied, And? I guess you're desperately trying to smear Cohen because you got nothing else to do. <laughs> and that's when Jeff Passan fired back with, I suppose whatever I have to do is better than what you have to do, which is visit your son in jail. Amazing. Yeah. So there you go. It, and, like, there's at least a 65% chance that that's actually Jacob Wall running on his dad's account, too. So. Yeah. 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 You know what's funny is, like, uh, Jacob Wall is so disgustingly unattractive that our thumbnail didn't even get dinged for, like, any kind of, like, even though he was, like, completely topless on it. Yeah. It wasn't like, this isn't overtly sexual at all because no one would be attracted to this. Damn. Mm -hmm. Damn, YouTube. Yeah, Susan's fucking savage. Susan body shamed Jacob Wall. <laughs> oh, anyways, before we get into the headlines, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Shopping for new clothes can be time-consuming, tedious, and expensive. Fortunately, Stitch Fix makes it easy to find the clothes that you love. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and just send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep. And there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com weird. This episode is also sponsored by ExpressVPN. You ever browsed in incognito mode? Yeah, you have. You know you have. Uh, well, it's probably not as incognito as you think. And why would it be? Incognito mode, like the Chrome browser itself, is a Google product, and Google has made its fortune by tracking your movements online. There's even a $5 billion class action lawsuit against the company in California, where it's accused of secretly collecting user data. Google's defense, incognito mode doesn't mean invisible. So how do you actually make yourself as invisible as possible online? You use ExpressVPN like we do. Even in incognito mode, your online activity still gets tracked and data brokers still get to buy and sell your data. One of these data points is your IP address. Data harvesters use your IP to uniquely identify you and your location. But with ExpressVPN, your connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server and your IP address is masked. Every time you connect to ExpressVPN, you get a random IP address shared by many other ExpressVPN customers. That makes it harder for third parties to identify you or harvest your data. Best of all, ExpressVPN is super easy to use. No matter what device you're on, phone, laptop, or smart TV, all you have to do is tap one button for instant protection. So if you really want to go incognito and protect your privacy, Secure yourself with the number one rated VPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash weekly weird and get three extra months for free. That is 
expressvpn.com slash weekly weird. Go to expressvpn.com slash weekly weird to learn more. We use it. We love it. Sometimes you don't even know it's on, and that's how great it works. There yeah. is no degradation in quality. I'll be. I only notice once I get like weird banner ads for stuff that I haven't said out loud into the microphone yeah, yeah, of my yeah. telephone. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, oh, nice. They don't know who the hell I am. It works great. And that's great that you can just leave it on because it's safer that you're doing that. Yeah. So uh, check that out and check out Stitch Fix. And now, here are the weirdest headlines from around the world this week. Kim Jong-un rejects COVID vaccine offer, urges North Korea to fight pandemic in our style. By uh, failing to launch missiles at it. Yeah. It's, yeah, the UN, they were like, hey, Kim, we got all these vaccines. You can have them. He's like, fuck off. I'm going to launch gonna, a missile into the sea, into the sea near Japan. I'm going to do this my style. I'm going to use an anti-aircraft gun to just vaporize anyone who tests positive for COVID-19. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm just throwing out ideas here, but uh, I would assume that he would get a bunch of people in a room, and then you'd have to go through a couple rooms, and if the, the people die in that room, then it's like, ah, this guy, he's got the virus, can't come in here. It could be it. Yeah. In World War Z, uh, North Korea just moved everyone down into some underground tunnels, and they were never seen again. Maybe he'll do that. Yeah. Who knows? In any case, did you see he's lost a lot of weight recently? He's looking oh, yeah? good. Yeah, he's still looking good. <laughs> <laughs> he's, oh, he, Kim! Kim, oh. Jong- Kim Jong-un's the new subway <laughs> uh, pitch man. Yeah, it would we actually a, it would almost be as bad as their previous one. We had a lot of trouble with that Jared guy, so we found a new guy. Kim Jong Un holding up his pants. <laughs> <laughs> he has lost a ton of weight though, because he was he was getting like real big there for a while, like around the time where everyone assumed that he was dead. Yeah, he was ballooning. He was quite large. He had like the gout, um, but yeah, now he's he's looking good. He looks ten years younger. So uh, congrats on the weight loss, Chairman uh, Kim. Yeah, uh, most glorious leader. And, uh, you look great. Yeah. Uh, I think I might go pick up a Subway sandwich myself after, <laughs> after seeing those results. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe how cheap these things are? <laughs> they say it's not real tuna, but I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> you should see the tuna we usually eat here. Actually, he eats the best food ever. Yeah, I'm sure he's he just He just kidnaps like Japanese sushi chefs and have them come over. Yeah. Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro says he will be killed, arrested, or reelected. So my, one of those is probably positive for him. My favorite version of, like, fuck, marry, kill. Yeah. Uh, kill, <laughs> arrest, or reelect. Yeah. Look, it's only going to go one of three ways. Yeah. And the fourth option is getting bit by a uh, llama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be the death. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that should be the ballot in the next Brazilian election. It's just Jair Bolsonaro. Kill, arrest, or reelect. Yeah. But um, Probably go better than the California uh, recall election. He's, uh, he's probably going to lose, but... Because he's literally Brazil's, Brazil's Trump, he's already he's do, doing the same playbook. He's just like these uh, these voting machines we got down here. Like uh, something's up. These yeah. uh, these socialist voting machine companies they're trying to steal the election from me. But it's like it's like your polling is not going so great right now either. You're probably just going to lose naturally. Nope. If I lose, it's uh, they yeah. stole it. By the way, uh, if you do live in California, vote no. It look there's an election next year. Newsom's <laughs> look. I don't like the guy. He looks like a fucking Batman villain. I fucking hate Gavin Newsom, but I will... But this is a ginormous waste of time and money. I'm going to throw back the biggest shot of whiskey ever and vote no. And then I'm going to go almost blow my brains out, but not... Next year, you can vote him out, do whatever you want. Primary. This is a specifically... Everyone running against him in this uh, recall election is a fucking psycho. Even the one other uh, guy running as a Democrat... This, like, YouTuber. I can't remember his name. He's this YouTuber. Not Philly D, is it? No. LA's new mayor? No, it's some, like, investment YouTuber who gives, like, financial advice. Oh, yeah. um, but, like... Bitcoin! It's, like, half of his platforms are, like, okay, that's, like, no nonsense. And then, like, other ones are, like, deploy the National Guard to, like, <laughs> kidnap Regardless, all the homeless people. <laughs> even if his policies were fine. It's, like, this is a specifically targeted waste of time and money. Yeah. Uh, by the Republican Party to attempt to bankrupt and uh, so yeah. down in California. So look, uh, fucking vote no for now. Next year, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. It's a this is specifically done to waste everyone's time yeah, and the budget of California. Exactly. They're so just trying to waste our time and like best case scenario, we get fucking Larry Elder as governor, who is as much as you might hate Gavin Newsom, you're probably not going to like Larry Elder. Yes. He's, uh, there is no good other option. There really for now. isn't. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. I fucking hate it. It yeah. sucks. But what are you going to do? You're going to put no down. Yeah. Yeah. 
Taliban fighters upset feel betrayed that U.S. military left non-working helicopters. Was the video real where it was someone trying to fly one? It, it, it might not have been real, but I saw it on the feed. And it was just like, it could barely just hover and move, but they couldn't like go anywhere. So they were just like in an airport, just kind of like... I didn't see that. I saw for like uh, Donald Trump Jr. and a bunch of other fucking ghouls, they were sharing this video of a helicopter flying over Kabul. They're like, they're, it's like, there's a man hung by a noose under this helicopter, but like, which is horrifying. Yeah. But it turned out it was just a, a Taliban guy hanging from a rope, like waving at everyone like, hey, we're the Taliban. We're yeah. back. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so there like, was also like there was a, a, a specifically done photo of everyone in gear and stuff left over. And like all of the gear is like improperly done. Yeah. Helmets are on backwards. They don't have their boots laced. Yeah. Like some of the guns are training rifles that don't even fucking work. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I mean, yeah, last week there was all these news outlets being like, look at all this gear that we just left behind for them to use. And it turns out that our military was smart enough to just like remove some key parts or just like intentionally like break our shit. So there's nothing they can do with it. It's not like the Taliban can call up fucking Raytheon and be like, hey, uh, we need like these parts over here. Yeah, and also the, the years of mechanical skill that goes into maintaining uh, yeah. these vehicles and weaponry uh, it's all they, scrap. They, yes. They, just go, look, if you want an idea of, like, propaganda of, like, shit that's coming out of Afghanistan specifically in the last two weeks, just go look at Meghan McCain's Instagram account. My father would have <laughs> never allowed this to happen. Here My, they are wearing our military uniforms. And, like, there was one where it was like, that, look, they're wearing all of our shit. And it's, like, camo that has never been used by the U.S. military. It's, like, I can't remember what it is. It was, like, British or French, uh, something like that. Anyway, if you're mad that the Taliban is in possession of like billions of dollars worth of gear, you should be mad that we, over two decades, brought all, <laughs> all that, that shit gear, over yeah. there instead of spending that money on literally anything else. A better education system for America. Like all that gear that we left behind, yeah, we could send every kid to college for free right now. Yeah. You should be mad about that. Mm hmm. Japanese mayor who bit athletes gold medal test positive for coronavirus. Man, this guy cannot catch a break. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, that's the thing too, is if he never bit this metal, no one would ever know who he was except for the people who live in his area. But like, yeah. uh, but now he's the metal biting guy and now we all know that he has coronavirus. Yeah, so if you recall this mayor, he one of his constituents won a gold medal and he uh, impulsively, he's like, give me that. And then he took a bite out of it, not knowing that uh, that's for the athletes to do and not you. Yeah. And so- Also it's gross, you're touching other people's nasty. things. nasty, there's a fucking pandemic going on. He was yeah. literally standing in front of a wall of like uh, coronavirus like <laughs> advisories. Uh, and because Japan is such a shame-based culture, he like, you know, did the deepest bow possible. He bowed like through the center of the earth and yeah. then he came back up and he forfeited three months of his salary. He was like writing, I'm sorry, notes constantly. And uh, even after all that, now he's, he's got the Rona. That's the thing, man. It's like, specifically putting your mouth on shit. Like I was uh, at the grocery store the other day. This kid's just fucking like on a, a like a rack of food, just like, uh, while Ew, his mom's what? stopping. Dude, kids are disgusting. I mean, they are, but like... I just was, I was like pushing by and I just saw it and I just stared and I was like, we're, like this is, we're never, this is never going to end. Kids are fucking disgusting. That's how they, they build up that immune system. It's by licking I mean, in, in pre-pandemic <laughs> times, I would agree with you. Yeah. That's why I swam in ponds as a child. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. when I was like really little, I mean, I'm playing the dirt and shit, but I got like sick multiple times with like really fucking weird, like, uh, bacterial infections where like I had to take amoxicillin for a week because it's just like, yeah, your kid, I mean, a lot of it is probably okay for your immune system, but a lot of it's like fucking disgusting. And we have doctors and modern medicine. Like that's the thing is like, I, the kid, it was, he was young enough to like not really know any better. Yeah. Like, but it was just like, it was just like, this is so fucking, everything's so fucking gross. Everything in the world's gross. Anyways. Russian sushi chain apologizes for ad featuring black man. Surprised there's Russian sushi. I mean, they can get fish out of the what do they call it? The Arctic Circle. Mm. Other than that, yeah, they don't have access to. Uh, well, now that the, now that they got uh, part of the Ukraine, they they do have uh, a much bigger access to. Uh, that's why they took the Black Sea. Yeah, that is yeah. why. And then uh, and then that little piece of Russia that's like separate over by like Finland, they do have that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, like I would love to see the uh, Russian version of. Uh, What's the show that they film in Alaska? Deadliest Catch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they're like, it's right up there anyway. Yeah. Russian Deadliest Catch would be great. 
But yeah, this this restaurant, they featured an ad with a black man eating sushi, and uh, all the local racists got really mad. And because uh, Russia is a kind of very racist country, especially when it comes to black people, the owner's like, you're right, Sorry. my bad. Well, it was probably like, you would assume it was probably like just some, you know, thing that he had to pay or download to like market the... Yeah, I don't know that it was like commissioned specifically for this. It yeah. might have just been a stock image, but yeah. I don't know. It's like when uh, it's happened more than once that I've seen one of our friends in like an ad for a new apartment complex. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> all they did was sell this photo like five years ago, yeah. and now they're pointing at new homes. That that the, I know what friend you're talking about, and uh, I don't know how they feel about it now, but the way they got really, really good wedding photos taken was they made a deal with the photographer oh, yeah. that the photographer could also take stock photos and sell them. So they got free wedding photos in exchange for stock photos, but now, like, yeah, their shit pops up, like, constantly. Yeah, it's uh, it's nuts. So I mean, it's funny to see. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, they, they've got to hate it. Like, they have to. And they got married, like, seven years ago, and yeah. it's still happening. That's so. the thing, too, is it's like uh, their, you know, financial stability back then versus now, mm -hmm. probably just like, oh, geez. <laughs> Can buy to take it off the market, I guess. Buy the rights to it. Be yeah, the only maybe. thing to really do. Still costs more than your wedding photos, but. I mean, uh. if you don't, unless you want to end up in, like, a chlamydia ad. It's true. <laughs> Yeah. They can do anything they want with it. That's how all those memes start. Like, yeah. the, it's all like, all, well, a lot of the memes are like Eastern European people who are doing yeah. it to get paid, and then they turn into fucking, what's the old guy's? Harold. Yeah, Harold. <laughs> and like, yeah, the, the people, like the girlfriend looking back, like, yeah. Huh. Conservative radio host who called himself Mr. Anti-Vax dies after COVID-19 battle. Did we not cover this last week? I don't remember. I think, I think we talked about other, we might have mentioned Mr. Anti-Vax at some point, but he's the third... Uh, syndicated radio hosts to go down uh, because these guys, for some reason, unlike unlike the politicians who are all vaxxed up and the Fox News people who are all like literally required to get vaxxed up, mm -hmm. the talk radio guys they, they fly by their own rules. They believe their own bullshit, and uh, yeah, they they're, they're dropping like flies. So I hope they bury them with their microphones because those things are going to be just nasty. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Look, I'm not happy this guy's dead, but if you're going to call yourself Mr. Anti-Vax and then die of COVID-19 months later, like... Yeah, it's on. like Mr. Cool Ice freezing to death. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Anti-Vax. <laughs> Mr. Cool Ice. Mr. Cool Ice, I don't know if you've seen, but he... Like, the, the pictures got, that got Mr. Cool Ice famous, like, those were like 15 years ago. He is so much more iced out now. Like, mm -hmm. he is... It's like full body Mr. Cool Ice. Well, he should not die of freezing because that would be ironic. Yeah, Mr. Cool Ice dies freezing to death. Yeah. That would be a funny headline. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because it's ironic. Yeah. This is irony, Susan. Susan, it's irony. And we told people not to eat the paste. God damn it. Stardew Valley is officially an eSport now. Yeah, are you going to get in on this? No, $40, but $40,000 for the person who, like, grows the most carrots or some shit. Look... I did play a little bit of that, uh, uh, what a year it's been. I can't even remember the Animal name. Crossing? Yeah, and it was like, it was fine for like a week, but then I went back to Stardew Valley, which is a fantastic game, way better than that, and I, uh, I've been seeing it pop up more and more recently, and I've been thinking about starting another farm. You so, should. I wanted to do a multiplayer one at some point because they did a multiplayer thing, but it's just like, then like people are relying on you, and it's just... I think this uh, this eSport version is like the multiplayer, so there's like teams mm. of farmers, and yeah, there's, there's like specific challenges that the teams are racing to complete. Mm. Farmers Insurance should sponsor this. They should. Farmers Only uh, Dating <laughs> yeah, should yeah, sponsor yeah. this. Yeah. Um, well, farmers Only, and that includes online farmers. If, if for some reason you haven't played it, the game is an absolute joy. I think I've had it for like years and I've never touched yeah, you, it. I think you, you, you might not like it, but it, if you got obsessed over like the resource management aspect of it... I can't get into new video games. I've Yeah, I've tried to. In the past I, I, month, I'm shut off. In the past month, I've booted up several games that I either like got for free off Humble at some point or it's on Xbox Game Pass. I booted them up, played for like a half an hour and been just like... This is too much shit to learn. Like, yeah. I, I started playing, like, Crusader Kings 3, which, to be fair, is an extremely complex game. And, like, just doing the tutorial, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sure people who are into this, like, fucking love it, but, like, this is, this is like a job. And I, I don't need another job. So, yeah, I it's, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of just waiting on the new Battlefield. And, yeah, like, that, I think I'm excited for that. If that doesn't hook me, I don't know if I'm going to be a gamer anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to hang up my gamer hat. Like, I just don't play. All I play is Magic the Gathering Arena. Yeah. 
you're still a gamer. Sure. But people look at me uh, the same way they look at people that play Candy Crush. Because I really... Like, Magic the Gathering has been around for like but I, I play longer it, than most of you have been alive. When they put it on mobile, that's all I play it on now. I sit on the couch and I play Magic and that's it. I don't even go on the fucking PC anymore. I try to play Cyberpunk again after those fixes and I'm just like, yeah, I just am not... I don't want to live a second life right now. The first one's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Dentist offers free cleanings to those that can beat him in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Do you have what it takes to beat me in Smash? Go against me on a one-on-one. -on -one. If you win, you get a free dental cleaning. If you lose, you have to tell the whole world that you lost to a dentist. Look, this is a great way to get kids to, uh, or adults, to go down to the dentist office. I feel like it's mostly adults who are like super into Smash. Uh, yeah. And and can't say no to a challenge. This is brilliant because, uh, you know, most people don't have dental insurance in this country unless they are lucky enough to work for a company that gives well, it I to did, them. Yeah. But uh, and and get, dental work is expensive. Yes, it, it is. It, it can really it can especially cost when a lot. you don't have insurance and you wait to get things fixed. Yeah, so it gets worse. So the idea of like, hey, you know, I haven't been to the dentist in like five years. I'm gonna and I'm really good at Smash, so I'm gonna go beat this dentist who I assume is probably really good. Uh, so, you know, you get there, you beat him, you get your mouth looked at, you get there, you lose. But you've just had a, such a nice time playing video games with Why this not? dentist. While, while like, you're there. Well, I'm here. Why don't you take a look inside my mouth? Yeah. This is a great, this is a great thing all around. I like yeah. it. Pile of raw chicken on airport luggage carousel prompts warning from TSA. The image or the video of it's this. It's disgusting. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's frozen, which yeah. helps a little bit. Like, it's not wet chicken. It's a, it's a cube of frozen chicken all packed in together that fell out of a cooler, I think. But it's just going around that carousel and it's, you know. Yeah, you it got, looks like an art project. It, yeah. <laughs> it does. It's, it's horrific. Um, but uh, just very, very funny. Yes. When I, when I saw it, I thought it was like some kind of like street art type, like yeah. gorilla art thing. Maybe it was. Well, now the TSA is involved. I can't remember which, I think it was one of our business flights back in the day, but like someone had shipped like a 24 pack of beer and it had broken, the oh. TSA had broken it, so there was just individual beers like scattered throughout the uh, conveyor belt. Yeah. It was funny. Female octopuses throw things at males that are harassing them. Yas queen. Octopuses are smart. They are very smart. And yeah, the, the females, they don't just throw shells. They also, they'll kick up dust. They'll do the old pocket sand yeah. trick. Get away. Get away, uh, incel! Doing that walk that it does by, getting yeah. catcalled <laughs> with, with the beaks. Yeah. Fuck off! Yeah. They are they're very interesting uh, animals. They're, yeah, they really are. Especially when they do that uh, cloaking mechanism that they have. Very impressive. Yeah, that's not all of them, but some of them, yeah, it's it's crazy. They'll just sit there and then... And they'll fucking spray you. They will. They will. Yeah. Yep. I hate, I hate that I really like eating octopuses because they're very smart animals. And uh, I feel bad. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I'll try anything once. I, I, I don't frequent the uh, octopus section of the sushi restaurant. Have you never eaten the, like, freshly killed, still I have. live octopus? I have, like, but I, it's not something I seek out. I quite enjoyed it. It's like sea urchin. Why. Like, I've, I've had the sea urchin. Not for me. I'll yeah. stick with the yellowtail. Anyways, final headline. Dog the Bounty Hunter says he had pass from the brothers to say N-word. I didn't even realize he's been off the air for like 15 years, and the reason he lost his show was because he got caught, like Papa John, just saying the N word a bunch yeah, of yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, it was like that. On a phone call. It was that, and also, didn't he like have an arrest warrant out for himself or something? Oh, I don't know. That would be funny. He's like, okay, this week's assignment is wait, it's me. That's me. No, <laughs> I'm under arrest. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know if that was it, but uh, yeah, he was asked about this because his, I guess, his daughter's like talking shit about him. I don't know really why he's back in the news, but he's back in the news and he was interviewed and the interviewer was like, so uh, yeah, you kind of lost your show because you said the N-word a bunch of times. Uh, can you go into that? He's like, well, I was in prison in the 70s and uh, you know, also by the way, I'm like 70% or I'm like 33 and a half percent Apache, so uh, not white. And also I was in prison, it was mostly black guys. And uh, yeah, you know, we would just say the N word and I, I got it. I didn't realize the pass had been revoked by then. That was my bad. <laughs> yeah. But I had the pass and you know what? I, I have more black friends than Eminem. He kept saying that. Hmm. 
Oh, well, they didn't laugh the first time he thought he'd uh, do the joke again. Yeah. You heard me right about the Eminem thing? Eminem, I got more black friends than Eminem. Hey, the cameraman laughed. I saw it. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, be sure to check out our most recent episodes. Yeah, watch uh, our last couple episodes are getting... They're getting dinged by Susan. Getting dinged real hard by YouTube and yeah. probably not showing up in sub feeds or whatever. So it's, make sure uh, you've watched them. There's a lot going on right now, and I think YouTube's getting real touchy with the button. Yeah, they, they have not been happy with what we've submitted in good very, faith. Very uh, <laughs> honest submissions yeah. for uh, suitability. Yeah. And they're saying no. Um, so uh, go back and watch every video three times. Yeah. Three times. Specifically this week's Tech News Day. And uh, there's like another one where it was just like, everyone's like, I this didn't even show up for me. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Tech News Day one was like. The video where we call uh, all these new snake oil things, snake oil. And they're like, wow, snake oil sounds pretty dangerous. Sounds like they're telling people to drink it. The, the video where we explicitly say, don't yeah. do this. They're like, well, you're basically promoting it. Um, so yeah, yeah, check those out. Please watch them uh, because yeah, this. And do the do the comment for engagement and all that because yeah. that actually helps. All so. that. Thumbs thank, up. Hey, for everyone that's been doing it, I just want to say thank you very much. And for people who have not missed episodes because of this, or if you have, go back and check. But if you haven't and you're uh, sticking with us, hey, thanks. Thanks we for really being, appreciate it. Thanks for being a real one. Yeah. I love you. We love you. I hope you have the best week. Bye.